Good morning, guys. This is a site that you have not seen in quite some time, and neither have I. We are going out our home inlet of Hillsborough Inlet, and I got my mom and my dad here today, and today's plan is to go offshore and search for mahi. We don't have any live bait with us. Our plan is to throw some jigs, so wish us luck, and hopefully we can find some fish. You guys ready? I'm ready, and I want to say I am excited to fish with Brooke. Um, it's like something new. I feel you know, so great that those guys get to travel to California and Alaska and Mexico and then back to California. That's so terrific. But guess what? I miss fishing with those guys. So Brooke called me last night and said, hey, you want to go dolphin fishing? I'm like, what kind of question is that? Of course. Let's go. Do it. So let's go do it. <laughs> <laughs> My first catch. <laughs> hey, it's a fish. No, it's a spaceship. It, is it? Yeah. Kind of got fins like a fish. Look. A dorsal, a peck fin, a tail. It's like my first fish of the day. Stick it good, though. It got stuck in the bow. Here it comes. Oh, it's got a beautiful bow. <laughs> 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 Like a kite. Number two. Every part of a dancing in the moonlight. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody. I would grab it. Did I get it on the right side? Oh. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Stick it down. No, no, come on. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta grab it! You gotta grab You're it. not gonna gasp it. It's gonna, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to grab it. Grab it before you shoot it away. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, I got my mom on the first fish of the day. So we ran out a thousand feet and we checked how much fuel we had left and we have not put gas in this boat in a long, long time. So we wanted to get rid of that old fuel. So we haven't put new fuel in and we basically used half of what gas we started with. So we stopped and we've just been going nice and slow and trolling some of those bucktails just at like seven miles an hour. And both rods just went off. My dad lost his on his real quick. He only had it on for like a second, but we're about to see what it is. My mom still got hers on. Let me get the net. I'm thinking a little tuna maybe. It is. You can flip it though. Oh, a little blackfin. Nice job, mom. Mom, is that your first blackfin tuna? I don't know. I think that's maybe. your first blackfin. There's the little mustad jig. Your first tuna! Yay! Look how There's cute it is. All right, well, I was beginning to think that we were only going to catch balloons today. <laughs> but there we go. Little black fin, literally so small. Should I let it go? Yeah. You think? I do. Why, you want to keep it? Yeah. Keep it then. Look at it all lit up. Little sushi Little um, black and black fin. Can you show it? <laughs> I had one hooked and then uh, it came off and I jigged a little bit and got another one and it came off. I had several bites. All right, so first fish of the day, that little black fin just trolling literally in the middle of nowhere. We ran all the way out here and not have seen, have not seen a thing. No seaweed, nothing floating. So we're gonna keep going, gonna put these lines back out. All we're doing is we have these two little spinners, both with little mustad bucktails and just trolling them behind the boat. So blackfin tuna do not have a size limit. So even though that guy was small, you're still allowed to keep them. And you're allowed to keep two per person or 10 per vessel. So we're gonna just keep doing the same thing that we've been doing, basically just blind trolling and hopefully we'll come across something floating and maybe there'll be some almaco jacks around it and hopefully some dolphin. Uh-oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I got it. Number one. Five, I think. 
five for five on balloons and one for, or I guess one for two on tunas. Do not let your balloons go. You let them up in the sky and you think it's so cool, but do you know where they end up? Right here in the ocean. And by the time this thing pops and it's floating around, fish, sea turtles, all that kind of stuff, think it's food, kind of looks like a jellyfish, and then they eat it. So don't let go of your balloons. Pop them, throw them away. Oh man, look at the bait under it. I'm serious. Did you see the bait? No, I didn't. Oh yeah, little ones or so. So why couldn't that attract something, Brooke? If it has bait like that? I mean, it could. I, I think it could. Take we are on! And we know it's a dolphin because we saw it jump. Not, not yeah. Yeah. Take it forward. Got one, Mom! Still just doing the same thing, just trolling at seven miles an hour in the middle of nowhere. Still have not seen anything but balloons. I couldn't tell if it looked like it was legal, could you, Dan? It looked legal. Yeah? Yeah! I'm gonna turn the engine slightly like this so it should be on that side. We're gonna just stay in gear like this. It does look legal. Watch your net, Dad. It's not the right direction. You're doing good. You're doing great. Doing good, Mama. Okay, now you know the other way. No, no, we're, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, but I'll, I'll be able to net it better if I'm. Where am I going? Just walk just forward a little, Mom. Legal. Oh, it's definitely legal. Keep going, Mom. You're doing good. Gotta bring it in. Go forward a little, Deb. Tip down. Go forward there. a little. Yeah, just like Go that. Go towards the front of the boat a little. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Woo! Nice one. That is a nice one. Good job, Mom. Yes. Okay, open your bail. So dolphin have to be 20 inches to keep. This guy's probably like 24. Oh, he's definitely legal. You want to hold him up and show him to us? There we go. First dolphin in the boat. Nice. What do you think? I think the fish aren't big today, but I know one thing, they'll eat good. 25 to the fork. All right, he's going on ice. Come on, mom, get it. Elmo! Elmo! <laughs> no, you're not gonna get it like that. You're not gonna get it like that. You gotta snatch at it. Come on, Mom, you're practicing your guts! <laughs> there, that's the way to do it. Elmo! <laughs> well, not only can you come out here and practice your gaff shot on balloons, but you're also cleaning up the environment. <laughs> Normally when you're fishing like this, you're looking for things floating because things floating hold bait and then the mahi will come to the bait. Now, I have never ever caught anything off of, off of a floating balloon before. If you guys have ever caught anything off of a floating balloon before, comment down below because my dad is very determined to catch something off of a balloon. Right, Dan? Well, there, was, um, there must have been at least 24 little bait fish under two of these balloons which i've never noticed that before but there was a nice little school so why not as we go by the balloons my dad's casting at them and now my mom is on gaff duty but i personally have never heard of anyone catching anything off of a balloon before but let me know what you guys think all right my mom's on again i was literally reeling this one in to just check to make sure we weren't tangled or didn't have any seaweed no it's not no it's not it's a another black fin. Watch your tip, mom. Don't hold it like that. Sorry. There you go. Same thing. Should we let this one go or keep it? That's up to you. Um. I guess it would depend who came. Let's keep. Just keep it. So honestly, if we were catching more dolphin today, I probably would let those little black fins go, but since we already kept one, might as well keep this one too, and then I'll blacken both of the um, black fins and then cook the mahi a different way. I went on the other side. See the little baits? Now they're hanging out with us. 
Happy birthday, unicorn. I just wanted to say, um, I started out the morning saying how excited I was because I hadn't been fishing with Brooke in a long time. And uh, it was a success. Um, we only caught one 25 inch dolphin, two small black fins, but look, look at this gorgeous day. You know, Brooke, Deb and I out here on our little boat, you know, we, we ran t uh, 15 miles out hoping to find a weed line, which never appeared. And, um, and then we just trolled back and picked up those three fish. I ate a public sub, which I never get on a boat without a public sub. And uh, <laughs> another, another good um, snack to have on a boat is um, Publix makes these fruit cups with the pineapple and strawberries. And I love all those things on a boat too. But just trolling these little light spinners, it was an easy day. We're gonna get back in time to clean the boat, maybe jump in the pool. We won't be too tired. And I think we caught enough fish for um, Brooke to, to feed the whole gang. So you don't have to slay to have fun. Not, not when it's like this out here. So I had a great, great day. I really did. I had a great day. I got to catch all the fish, which was awesome. I don't know how that happened. But um, I feel really lucky to be out here. Um, you're the best daughter, Brooke. Spending the day with your mom and dad. Um, just, I'm so happy. I'm blessed. Thank you. How about you, Brooke? Did you have fun today? I had a lot of fun. I was thinking that we were going to run out, you know, and find something good, which never ended up happening. But that's how dolphin fishing is a lot of the times. And every day can be completely different. Yesterday, I know someone who ran out as far as we did, and he found a weed line and saw hundreds of dolphin. Brought home like 20 keepers, could have kept more. Then today, we run out the same distance, didn't find anything. And you know what? In a couple hours, it could be completely different, you know? the current could blow in a different weed line and you could come out here during the afternoon and absolutely slay so you never know but you never know until you get out here also so regardless of how you do it's a great day on the water we have enough fish for dinner i don't think you can beat it most likely that's probably the end of our day so i will see you guys back at the fillet table Guys, well, we are back to the dock. We just finished washing the boat. We're in the pool for a while. I'm about to fillet up the fish, but I'm gonna show you real fast what we were using today because I didn't really show you on the boat. But these are just mustad bucktails. Um, I'm pretty sure we caught um, two of the fish on the white one and maybe one black fin on this darker black and purple one. But if you guys are interested in picking up some of these or any kind of mustad products, um, you can use my code Brook20. I will have that linked in the description and you guys can save 20% on all Mustad products. All right, well here is the one mahi that we picked up. Mahi are normally in schools. We did have two other um, jigs out when we caught this one, but this was the only fish that we caught. This one is a cow. It's got a little rounded off head. If it was a bull, it would be shaped like this. Mahi are like the fastest growing fish in the ocean. They have a ginormous stomach. That is normally really disgusting. Just be very careful when you cut down here because you really don't want to puncture that stomach and cut it open and get all that gross stuff on your meat. They actually are, I've looked it up, they are the fastest growing fish in the whole ocean. The fastest growing fish in the whole ocean. There you go. Victor's looked it up. Oh, and Victor came to help film me um, filleting the fish. So thanks, Vic. <laughs> okay, so now, we're gonna go from the head all the way down to the tail. Just with the tip of my knife, just barely going in on the fly. I don't even remember the last time that I filleted a mahi. We caught him when we were in the Keys with Nick, but I didn't even fillet one. You know that? It's true.
Alright, so here's that part where you want to be careful. Where you're going around the belly. This one's got eggs. Isn't it amazing how small and already has eggs too? Yep, mahi get giant, but they can have eggs when they're very small fish. And another thing to note is they have a really good yield. For the size of fish they are, you get a lot of fillet off of them. Something that's very interesting, you see how this fish is pretty bloody. If you take your knife and you can see that there's blood on this fillet and you go like this. It just kind of gets that blood right off of that meat. So I'm not, I'm like, have my knife at like an angle so I'm not like cutting into the meat. See that? Mm -hmm. You never want to wash off your fish fillets with fresh water. If you want to bring home a bucket of salt water from out in the ocean, I wouldn't even use this canal water because it's kind of brackish and gross back in here. Especially if you're going to freeze it, I definitely do not recommend um, cleaning it off with fresh water. That was just a little bit of the belly bone. Okay, if I had to pick one fish that was the hardest fish to skin, it would probably be a mahi. That's why a lot of people peel the skin, but we're gonna just take our time and we're using that same knife. This is a Dexter 7 inch flexible fillet knife. I thought it was a female that I was gonna cook. You guys can also save 20% on any Dexter products with code BROOK20 on DexterOutdoors.com. But there we go. Heck yeah. It's always a good day when you don't leave any skin on your dolphin fillet. We got pin bones that go from, this is the head side of the fish, all the way, you can feel with your finger. You can even heal here with the knife. All the way up to like here. So, we're gonna cut on both sides of that bloodline and get out the bloodline at the same time as the pin bones. So, there's your bloodline and your pin bones at the same time. So there is our beautiful mahi filet. I'm gonna knock off the other side of this fish, clean the black fins, and then I will see you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. We are here cooking in my parents' kitchen and we are going to be blackening our mahi and tuna tonight. We're going to do some baked asparagus and then some cream of coconut rice, which is so, so delicious. And to top off our blackened fish, we're going to do a little mandarin salsa. First thing we'll do is we'll season our fish with, if you guys have ever seen my videos before, you know how much we love this um, blackened breadfish magic seasoning by Chef Paul. As much as I would love to be sponsored by them, not sponsored, but this stuff is the best blackening seasoning. It's funny because a lot of times we meet people and they say that they love this, that we got them hooked on this blackening seasoning. And I'm telling you, if you haven't tried it yet, you gotta try it. It is so, so good. So, just giving all this stuff a nice, good layer. This right here is the black fin. And as you can see, there's still a little bloodline in there, as well as like there was still a little bloodline left in these dolphin pieces. But when you're eating fresh fish like this, it really doesn't matter that much. But I'm gonna flip all these over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So for the mandarin salsa, we already have everything chopped in this container, ready to go. We got plum tomatoes, some red onion, some mandarin, and then some cilantro on top. So just like those little mandarins that come in those little cups at the store, the not the sweetened ones, just like the regular unsweetened um, mandarins. But this is just a delicious, fresh thing to top off your fish, especially it goes so well with a blackened fish. I think we went a little heavy on the tomato versus the mandarin, but that's okay. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge so it's nice and cold when we're ready to serve it. Let's get this going in the oven. Which the oven is at 350. All right, while we're waiting for our pans to heat up, we're gonna do mahi in one and then the black fin in the other. We got some olive oil in there right now heating up. Our rice is finished, so we're gonna add the cream 
of coconut into there. And this stuff is very sweet. And let me tell you, it is not low on calorie. This stuff has a lot of calories. So I don't suggest using this entire container. Add a little, mix it around, and then see if you need to add more. I remember one time I made this rice and my grandma was here and she was like, that was the best rice I ever had in my entire life. I remember. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember, I remember exactly where she was sitting too. At her this is the best rice I've ever had in my life. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Wow. Oh, mm. Amazing. I second that one. Wow. It's so <laughs> great. I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. That rice, I've never had rice like that before. Usually rice has no taste to it. But this I had seconds and I'm going to go for thirds. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama. We're going to do the mahi first and this side. I always crowd my fish because I always want to cook everything at the same time. Everyone's in there like a nice, happy little family. I am a lucky man. There's uh, no doubt about that. Um, you know, I wonder how many people's daughter call them to take them fishing, spend the day fishing, and then look, cook me a dinner too. That's beyond lucky. Come on. Come on. That's way beyond lucky. I don't even have to taste it to know it's good. <laughs> I didn't get to go out with them, but I got to enjoy the dinner that Bricky made. Everything was absolutely delicious, and one thing Brian just said was three little fish, and there's actually a little bit left over. There is five of us here, and we're all well fed. Like, I mean, I could eat a little bit more, but I'm perfectly full, and it goes to show you don't need to slay it and fill the cooler to have a good day out there. You don't. Not at all. We no. were missing one brother, so if the other brother was here, then we probably wouldn't have any fish left. But I mean, I had a great time. I enjoyed going out for like a not a full day on the boat, especially because since it was just me and my parents, when we got back to the dock, my dad had enough energy to even wash the boat with me, so <laughs> that was great. <laughs> and I just had a lot of fun going fishing with them. My dad said earlier that he's like, feels so lucky to go fishing with me, but I also feel so lucky to go fishing with them. So I had a great time today. And then the dinner was really great too. And the boat started. We haven't started that boat. <laughs> and I, I can't remember the last time we went out in it. I actually, um, I made a joke last night to Victor. I go, Vic, if we're not home by like, kind of late, like you gotta call the Coast Guard. <laughs> I was like, we haven't used the boat in quite some time. So, and I know the dolphin have been out far and we probably would have gone further today if we had more gas in the boat, but we didn't need to go out further because we found the fish in closer. Yeah, yeah. This was a delicious dinner. The fish was prepared uh, 
perfect it was awesome the rice delicious the salsa is so good um, the whole thing it was all oh, in this bear is delicious everything was so good everything's super light like being able to eat like rice and salsa and things like that with your fish gives it like a really nice light effect and both fish were amazing. I think we all had a piece of tuna and mahi and we're all trying to figure out which one we liked more and it was so hard because they both turned out so good, which isn't surprising. Mahi and tuna are pretty, pretty consistent fish. So it was a great dinner. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.